What's going on guys? The answer for this uh, package unit. Using adjustable. I'm gonna show you when you don't have a coupling. I don't have a coupling or my, my swage kit here. So I'll show you what I'm gonna do for this to connect to my uh, three quarter here. I'm gonna go to seven eighths. It's cold here guys. Uh, you gotta do what you gotta do. I'm gonna turn this around, get myself situated on that side. I'm doing my liquid line right now and my discharge. I'm gonna run it straight across over this into that side over there. I like to do the initial braise and then build a shoulder on top. That's how it's taught, just to be safe, sure there's no leaks. So I'll go over it once and I'll go over it again, build a shoulder. You see here, I'm gonna heat it up. Just put a small shoulder on it. Make a little bridge. So you know for sure you're sealed. So I'll save this small one. When I get the other small one, I'll just attach them so don't waste material. Holiday time, cold time, Christmas bonus time. I have some vigilant in here. Okay. Go underneath. I got the nitrogen on inside. I'll show you where I hook it up. You want to have nitrogen flowing, guys. Oxygen has moisture in it. You have carbon buildup inside your pipe. That's no good for the compressor. I don't think you can see this, so. All right, guys. So we got some seven eights here. Tong coil this, I only got a little bit left. I'm just gonna gently put my foot on here, maybe in the middle of your boot. Push against the floor at the same time and uncoil. And it'll become nice and straight. Push against the floor. There, good. We straighten it out more after. So I got a nice long piece for there. So straighten out, I'm just gonna use all this anyways. My side's capped there still. You don't want any dirt going in. All right guys, so what I'm gonna do for this, I'm gonna go from three quarter to seven eighths for discharge. So fine, sand this. Use sand grit or um, sand cloth, whatever you wanna call it. Sand this up. This seven eighths, if you ream it good enough, will fit right over that three quarter. Mark it with a marker how far I want to go. Just a little mark. Let's do, say I passed my threshold. A tight spot here. There you go. So seven eighths, right over the three quarter. Then after I braise it, I could manipulate this in a way that I'll bend this a little bit more straight because over construction, you know, things move. So I'm gonna braise that up. So I got my nitrogen flowing in my discharge inside. Pretty much the first feed on. Okay. So you gonna let that dry. Once you see these black spots disappearing, you know obviously it's good enough to adjust or move the pipe. 
Until then, go move it, crack it, or not. And I'll bend it how I have to. So that's gonna be like that. Let me show you what's going on here. So we got a piece here. I went lower on my liquid line. So this piece will go right across. You wanna think ahead, cause you wanna make, make it look nice, right? It's gonna go across there and I'll lift it up. That's gonna be going to my discharge part. All right guys, so I got this all set up here. Straight across. I'm gonna go put my uh, nitrogen on and raise it up. I'll show you something inside as well. Okay, so it's hooked up to my discharge. Remember, it's all connected upstairs now. So the coil is part of the loop. So make sure the other side, the liquid side, straighter is off. Because that last joint, you will never do with the pressure built up inside. You'll just be blowing out. So always make sure that straighter valve is out on that last joint. Well, that should be out anyways. It's out right now. I'm going to pump in nitrogen right now. We'll braise it up. Let's put a little bit more. It's a pretty... Okay. So it's going in my discharge, going through my coil, and back out my liquid side. If you see this, guys, it's pretty tight in here. Plus, I got my legs hanging off a cliff here. There's a hole right here in this area behind me. Awkward. We're going to braise this up. It should be good to go. We're going to pressurize it, make sure there's no leaks. I already pressurized my lines before. And I opened them up just now when I started doing this. So we're good up until the condenser. We'll braise this up. Acetylene first. Almost like a teardrop, you just fill the shoulder. Reminds me of MIG welding. It's like a small bead. Doesn't look as pretty, but you know what? You know you're gonna have to have more joint in this joint too. I'm gonna adjust myself for falling off this cliff. When I have two joints like this, just close together, after I suck it on both sides, I'll just fill it up. Might not have enough nitrogen. As close as we can, see when it evens out. Just using these uh, JBs, old gauges, just to do stuff like this. I just might just have enough just to fill it to 100 psi. If it holds 100 psi, I'm happy. Just enough. Okay, just about 100. Take all my ports off. I will release the pressure for my gauges after. You want to minimize all areas of leaks as possible. You're pressurizing so you know exactly that it's not your gauges, it's not your schraders. You're isolating it. So if it's not holding, once you check it in a bit, you know something's up. You see these go up and over and they go to my unit. What's going on, guys? In this video, you'll see the few little things I do sometimes when brazing, and we've all been there in a pinch, we're far away from the suppliers, we need materials, we're at a job two, three years later, we have to commission this unit and get the job done. But I also don't want to get the wrong points across, thinking you can use any size refrigeration lines. This was only a three foot piece, which had more than enough velocity for oil return and does not affect my two to three degree pressure loss, which you need. 
you're going to see a few charts illustrating the importance of proper sizing. Um, this unit is not like your typical split AC system. The discharge line with the compressor outside in the condenser. On this package unit, it operates like an indoor chiller with an air-cooled condenser in which the compressor is located inside the unit with the evaporator. You do not want to have less than 3% capacity loss. There's a few charts showing how power and capacity are affected by increasing pressure drop on both discharge and suction side. On any system, to make sure you have proper velocity and minimal pressure drop with proper oil return to the compressor, you want to have at least 500 feet per minute for suction or hot gas line horizontal and 1,000 feet per minute for suction or hot gas riser. Now this unit, like many other units, have a predetermined line set size that's engineered by the factory. I've seen many compressors fail prematurely because of improper line set sizing. And sometimes there are companies that will just replace the compressor, not looking into more of the details. We could talk about another video on how some units are not so forgiving with having a long line set, oversized line set, and undersized line set, and the importance of having a proper line set. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next one.